knows that. She's been so supportive of our, of our foundation and our mentorship initiative. And she's here today to present our second Enterprising Women Advocacy Award. Gloria. Thank you. I feel such energy building up. It's like so high now. I don't know if it's going to go right through the roof, but it's great. So I think you're all having a great time. And as you know, I am very, very in love with the travel industry. And when I heard that Carnival Cruise Corporation, Cruise Lines, was going to be here today, I said, oh, I have to come by. And, and one of the reasons is because Carnival really has been an innovator. And we talk a lot about innovation here and being enterprising. And I remember um, way back, way, way back, when I was not even a travel agent, but I was a teacher. I went on a wonderful honeymoon cruise. And it was on a Cunard line, which Carnival, by the way, eventually bought. Um, and in that, those days, back in 1970, you know, cruises were really kind of very formal. A lot of people thought they would like to cruise because they'd have to dress up all the time, particularly the men. Okay, and, um, and mostly we were talking about ocean-going vessels. So, you know, I fell in love with the idea of cruising and changed my career. Uh, when my husband said to me, stop moaning about travel agents and all the fun that they're having. If you can't beat them, why not join them? So, sure enough, I did do that. Um, and then when I opened my first little teeny office, guess who showed up first? And that was a representative from Carnival Cruise Line. And they were just getting started in 1971 here in the States. And they only had two little ships, and they were kind of old, but they had a concept, a new concept, which was very innovative for the industry. And that was kind of the fun ships, you've heard about that? And a different uh, way of traveling on cruises, much more relaxed, a lot more for just people who want to have a good time and not necessarily so formal and expensive. So it seems very appropriate that we stay on that theme with Carnival because they have come up with something very unique in what's called the uh, Carnival Fathom. And today the lady who is involved with and really the innovator and the concept of a Carnival Fathom is here today to speak with us. And her name is Tara Russell, who is president of Fathom, a social impact company that offers a new category of travel as the global impact venture of Carnival Corporation, which is the world's largest travel and leisure company. After envisioning Fathom in 2013, Tara guided her idea from concept to full launch of its brand and business model in mid-2015. Today, Fathom offers purpose-driven travelers with authentic cultural immersion and social impact opportunities that enable them to make enduring contributions to local communities worldwide. So prior to joining Carnival, Tara founded Create Common Good, a nonprofit social enterprise that provides training and employment to refugees and other populations, experience barriers to employment through a creative food production model. CCG has delivered more than 100,000 job training hours with an average employment success outcome of more than 90% and has returned more than $18 million to the community via graduate earned wages. Tara also founded JITASA, but she'll tell me what the correct pronunciation is when she gets up here, which is a for-profit social venture with offices in the US, Bosnia, and Thailand, which also provides financial services to the nonprofit sector and serves hundreds of global social sector employees. She lived in Thailand for four years, where she offered pro bono small business development training to non-governmental organizations. And while she was there, she co-founded Nightlight, 
an international organization that offers vocational opportunities, life skills training, and physical, emotional, and spiritual care to women seeking freedom from human trafficking and sexual exploitation. Earlier in her career, she excelled at several Fortune 500 companies, including Nike, Intel, and General Motors. She was named to Fast Company Magazine's Most Creative People in Business 1000 for 2014 and 2015. And she is a member of the World Economic Forum's Global Leadership Community and serves on the Enterprising Women Advisory Board. A visionary social entrepreneur and advocate, Tara has found a way to incorporate the spirit of giving into a for-profit enterprise so we want to congratulate to 2016 Enterprising Woman Apathy Award winner, Tara Russell. Thank you very much. Sharon, with Barbara, with Cindy, with Lori, uh, Monica, all of you, I, I feel truly humbled to be here. Um, you know, I think all of us are sort of a product of the culture we grew up in and really the stories that have made us who we are. So I wanted to take a minute to just um, share a bit of who I am. And of course, you have to start with your own child, right? So this is my daughter, Lucy. She and my son Tyson are the best thing I've ever done. Lucy is eight years old. She's a brilliant mathematician and an entrepreneur. She says uh, the thing she's most proud of is that she gets to work with refugees, which I'm very proud of. My goal and job in life was really to help people discover their superpowers. So I have this fundamental belief that each of you here and, and all of us have superpowers that we were given and your superpowers are different than anyone else's superpowers and no one can take your superpowers away um, so the thing i talk about with my children is their superpowers and really who i believe they are and i'm excited to see what they do with those superpowers and so the big hairy idea behind fathom behind create coming good behind nightlife but behind jatasa really comes from this idea of superpowers so my goal in life is really to build creative business models, for-profit, non-profit, I don't really care. My goal is to serve the mission of really unleashing superpowers in the world through market-driven business solutions. So that's kind of why I do what I do. My background um, is sort of a messy kind of mutt background, like many of you perhaps. I spent my sort of first career in the corporate world with General Motors with Intel, with Nike. I was um, an engineer by training. My background is mechanical engineering, naturally. Um, and I, through that adventure, I was pursuing medical school, thought I was gonna become a doctor, serve the world that way, and I was offered a job at General Motors at the age of 17. And really that changed the trajectory of my life. I fell in love with business. I realized that I was pretty good at business and I really looked at how could I use and leverage business as a vehicle to transform communities. And so I was fortunate when I was offered an opportunity to go and build Shanghai General Motors in 1999. And if any of you have spent time in Shanghai, this was before Shanghai was Shanghai. It was um, when no one really was talking about Shanghai and so in 1999, General Motors built the first joint venture with the Chinese government in China. And it was a big moment in history in the auto industry. It was the first time an American automaker had made cars in China. Insight that year really showed me that my role was to build this path between, not to choose business, not to choose impact, but to choose both. And it was living side by side with poverty every day, um, building something from nothing uh, in the middle of a pig field in Pudong, which didn't exist at the time, that really taught me, I think, who I am today and, and really led my journey. So 
I wanted to just dedicate really um, this award to the women who've shaped me, uh, which is, is many. My mother, of course, the most enterprising woman. Um, this is a woman by the name of Charit Khan. Uh, I was fortunate to be part of building and have been fortunate to be part of building a lot of different companies over the last 20 years. And this woman, Charit Khan, is a young mother uh, from, from Northern Thailand. She uh, was sold into prostitution um, by her family. And I think most of us can't fathom what that experience would be like. Uh, she was forced to go and earn wages and, and make money for her village. And we were fortunate to bring her into a new life, a new path within Nightlight, one of the organizations that I was part of building. And so what we did is we simply taught women skills that they could make money that day because part of working in uh, human trafficking is the ability to make wages daily. And so she was able to learn to make jewelry and a variety of other things. We made note cards, all kinds of stuff. And, and she transformed her future. And so really this award is for Tara Khan, who taught me, because all of us uh, that lead companies know that entrepreneurship is not for pansies. Um, every day both builds you up and tears you down in, in unique and different ways. Um, there, there is no road map for entrepreneurship. Uh, there are many moments you question uh, your own capabilities, and I think about these women, I think, if they can do this, I can do anything, right? So forgive me for being emotional. This woman, I call her Mama Delal. She's, um, Um, so much and so while in theory I've done some stuff that's helped other people you know any of us could probably tell you the reality is it's helped me and it's helped us far more than it's you know potentially served others so this is a woman from the Congo um, her name is Jacqueline we have the pleasure and opportunity of serving women from all over the world uh, women who come out of refugee camps women who come out of prison women who've been living on the streets who've been living in domestic violence and abuse, and Jacqueline is one of many that is taking a past of genocide and horrific things and turning it into a beautiful future. So I'm a big believer that our pain leads us to our purpose, and I see this every day through the work that I do. These are just a few, actually Linda's with us here today. Amazing what women can do when when put together. I appreciated um, Barbara's poem and her talk about progress never happening alone and always happening with others. And, and I have been fortunate, as probably many of you have been fortunate, to be part of lots of beautiful progress, but never alone. And so I just wanted to take a minute and share a bit about our corporate family. Um, most people here at Carnival, they think Carnival Cruise Lines. Carnival Corporation is our sort of global parent company. One of our many brands is Carnival brand based here in Miami. We have 10 global brands. We have Carnival, we have Fathom now that we've just launched. We have Princess based out west. We have Seaborn based out west, Holland America based out west. We also have Cunard, p UK, p Australia, Aida and Costa. So there are 10 of us kids, so to speak, in the family. And what you see here is you see Christine Duffy who's our new leader of Carnival Brand. You see Anne Sherry, who's a fierce woman and strong leader who heads our, our Australia family of brands. And Jan Schwartz, who leads Princess on the West Coast on the far right. And then Linda Cole, of course, one of my heroes, who leads the Carnival Foundation here in Miami. And so we are so fortunate. We've got Marie McKenzie and Vicki Ray and a few of our team from Fathom, Virginia and Becca and Erica here today. We have remarkable women within our corporate family. And for me, part of the great joy of what I do is the opportunity to learn from and work with such amazing people. So today, you know, you're hearing a bit about Fathom, which is this new company we've just launched and built. But the, the secret behind Fathom is we're unleashing superpowers. That's really what we're about. And for me, Fathom, really, I just think about Noemi, this powerful woman. Noemi is here on the right. Uh, this is in a tiny little village called Growing So Rapidly. And all of a sudden, they started to get some recognition. They got a contract with the largest supermarket in the Dominican Republic. 
Next thing you know, she's wrestling with, how do I scale my business? I've never been to school. I have no idea what I'm doing. Do, do any of us know that feeling, right? Or we're thinking, I'm making it up every day. I just, you know, I need some help here. And at this point, we met Noemi. One, we fell in love with her, but we're so inspired by her story and her team of these 60 women. Most, she's about 20 years younger than most of them. She's, I think, in her late 40s. She looks like she's 20, but she's in her late 40s. And most of the women that founded this social enterprise, Chilcal, in the northern coast of the Dominican Republic, are in their 60s. Uh, and it is so inspiring what they've done. So you may wonder, well, how is Fathom involved with them? Well, we've essentially architected a beautiful infrastructure along the northern coast of the Dominican Republic. We've been deeply immersed in working in the DR for about two years. We, as a corporate family, invested in a port community called Amber Cove, um, a beautiful $80 million port facility that really welcomes all of our brands into that northern region. And what we at Fathom has do have done is built architecture and infrastructure along the whole coast to really support education, the environment, and economic development in a wide variety of ways. And so Chokal, which Noemi leads and founded, is one of there are fun things that our travelers get to be a part of that serve partners like Chokal. So one of the opportunities you have if you come on a Fathom trip is you get to learn to make organic chocolate, all while, at the same time, helping Noemi grow her production force because she can't afford to hire as many as she would like. So it's a little bit like the I Love Lucy episode where it's like, you know, the chocolate's racing down. But the reality is we're doing it, don't worry, from, from my food production background, we're doing it in safe, sanitary conditions, you know. The FDA would be very pleased with what we're doing there. But I share this just because Noemi is really the reason behind so much of what we're doing at Fathom and really within the Carnival corporate family. As, you know, those of you who are here in Miami, you know that, that Carnival and the Carnival family and really Mickey Harrison and his family have just been such a generous corporate family, but also generous family here. And they have built so many things that we can all be really grateful for. And so in many ways, Fathom really was born out of a spirit of generosity that existed long ago from the many, many great things the corporate family has always done. And my passion is really to harness and leverage assets and resources in a way that is natural for any individual or any corporation. And so what we're doing at Fathom is just the beginning of kind of where we're headed. Um, this quote is kind of the, the rally cry in our North Star for our team at Fathom and for me in the work that I've done for the last 20 years. You know, I think, unfortunately, life is short and we have to make every day matter. And so I think a lot about what we all choose to do with our one wild and precious life. And I appreciate these words, um, beautiful words by Mary Oliver. So I'll just leave you today with this video, which is just a bit more about Fathom. The night before I leave for the... Thank you so much. Um, Jennifer, I'm going to mispronounce your name. Jenny 